35 minutes to talk. 35 minutes. I don't know what to do right now, man. I got a job. Uh, got an email about a job. They never give me this email where they give me a couple days to think about it. They give it to me now. When the next day is when they're going to do the job uh, interview thing, so. I don't even know if I want to go for it. It's a thankless, crappy food delivery job in Manhattan. I know exactly what those guys do. I was down there all the time delivering for caviar and uh, I saw them, you know, those are the guys that refill the, uh, you know, similarly they re they got to they got to do it just as hard a work a job, but they got to refill the uh, water cooler or something like that. But also they do grocery delivery or something like that. I have no idea. I mean, I I do I did what I could do, with in terms of the uh, uh, Insta Shopper thing. But the way those guys do it, they actually have a pull cart. And I think they coordinate things in such a way that they, it's not random. These people order this monthly delivery service and, uh, yeah, it's just never going to be like a, it's not a random thing like Insta Shop where you, you don't know where you're going or who you're going to be dealing with or how much you're going to have to order or what floor they're going to be on and all that crap. These guys seem to know exactly uh, what, what, who they're delivering to and how much. And they have, you know, they have all the tools necessary to get it done. And I respected that. I was like, yeah, you know, that looks like a better thing. But it's in boxes. That's the thing to me. It seems like it's prepared at the facility. They don't go to a supermarket and purchase the items to be delivered. They have all this stuff at the Fresh Direct uh, warehouse. And then they just box it up and send deliver it directly to these people's doors um, and, it, and it, it looks so much more efficient than Insta Shopper and all that um, I just if I could just get a moped and purchase one if I could just get a uh, bike motorized bike built I'd be making hundreds of dollars on Insta Shopper up here in the Bronx I've never touched Manhattan. I just wait it out, wait for orders to come in, and then I go run them. I wouldn't have any trouble doing it. And I'd feel like I was doing something nice. Most of the people that order stuff are uh, elderly, uh, paralyzed. You know, in a case where they can't easily go out and, uh, and buy things. You know, they'd have to go through a lot of hoopla to get on the bus and go somewhere. Having the convenience of someone delivering things to you is actually the better way to go. So, unfortunately, I'm, I'm in a pickle with the whole, I can't possibly get uh, my life together. I can't get nothing together right now in order to make some money. Well, at least I got my computer back up and running, which makes it easier to, to uh, get my resume up and looking decent and of course uh, go apply for a lot of jobs and uh, I'm hoping that I can you know I don't have a problem getting a job it's just everything and everything and anything is trying to prevent me from getting a job and like I, I already made clear there's people at the jobs that are trying to make work a complicated situation when it could just be a place where you do as little as possible and get paid for it. Why can't we have that? Why can't we just understand that we want that as, 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 uh, as our job? That's not how people think. You know, it's not about, it's not about work to me. It's about trying to make some money, money, money. I don't care about who, what I'm doing or to no, I would care if it was something I wanted to do. If I was like an airline pilot, you know, or a computer guy, I would care because I recently 
have discovered uh, I have I have some sort of predis predisposition towards doing things with electronics and engineering and I do enjoy it I like getting things to work I like diagnosing why they they're not working so that I can learn better to understand how to fix them better so it sucks that all these things I can do are going to be wasted and I'm not going to get a job doing what I want to do and instead potentially I'm going to end up doing a lot of delivery jobs because those always exist there's never going to be a time where there's not going to be delivery job always whether you're delivering people or you're delivering packages or you're delivering food those jobs are like the, they're the most prevalent of the jobs ever in the history of jobs um, what I really wanted to discuss and I, you know, I'm noticing that I'm not getting any views anyway so no one is going to know or care about what I'm posting about on the YouTube which is fine I mean I, everybody loses their crap if they don't get thousands of views on YouTube but I made videos all day back in high school I was one of those guys making fan fan films and videos and fan edits and nobody cared I get maybe one 11 views tops on a video I made in a forum and I posted it and that was the internet it wasn't like you you lost your crap over it nowadays the media has expanded crazily people are trying to turn it into a, a much more uh, serious professional thing before it was just a bunch of kids running around making videos now it's trying to turn it into a serious money-making profession and will it ever be that good luck with that because I know the internet like the back of my hand man it's like it's 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 anything goes there's no rules can't make rules um, but yeah I mean uh, I don't stress the views thing because I did indeed make a lot of little cute videos I've been doing it for a while uh, once I started messing around with uh, Movie Maker and Windows, Windows Movie Maker I started messing around with it I made a ton of little videos I neglected I didn't have a camera uh, you'll notice in like one of the videos from way back when I was playing with my Ninja Turtle toys I actually have my thumb in the in the video my thumb showed up and I would have liked more of that I would have liked to have made more videos of me at that age I was literally around probably 16 17 back then and playing with my Ninja Turtle toys and literally back then we had to I'm gonna give you some history on how we, I did things we uh, we didn't have the broadband stuff, Wi-Fi stuff. None of that existed. I'd use the internet heavily, nonetheless. But I did everything I ever did on the internet through dial-up connection. So back then, there was no YouTube. Uh, in fact, I made that video just to play around with Movie Maker and make a video. I had no inter intent of uploading it to the internet or anything like that. I was just playing around trying to make... I made that video in particular as an actual parody of, uh, of Sandy Cholera's uh, Batman Dead End. I actually made that as a parody of that. and I wanted to just make a movie. I didn't really care about uh, making it and putting it online. I was just playing around with filmmaking techniques at that time, and just figuring out how I wanted to make movies. And I made I made movies in video games instead, uh, because it was just a lot less hassle to put to to just you know do it all digitally instead of trying to get the getting the lighting right and doing it that way and all that stuff was very complicated. So. When you're doing it in a video game, all that's not a problem. Um, eventually, I, you know, I set things up the way I wanted them to be. 
I had to coordinate everything exactly the way I needed them to be in the in the in the game, and I just shot the shots and recorded them and made a I made a few little films with, from that. And you could do a lot more epic things. That's the thing about that as well. When when I made the Ninja Turtle thing, it was just you can never hope to have it look real and look like they're taking place in the sewer. Uh, I was trying to create that element. And I've been playing with Ninja Turtle toys since uh, the, the, the old show. You know, the new Ninja Turtles is coming out. I'm gonna, I don't, I don't know if I wanna check it out. I was, I've, I've completely abandoned the Ninja Turtles as far as the way they are now. I don't really care about the Michael Bay version and I didn't care about the Nickelodeon version. And even though they're, apparently this new one is, is some sort of political statement with a black April, I really still do not, I'm not going to jump in on that either, so I hope the kids like it, whatever. It's, to me, go back and watch the old show if you want to see the wacky crap we used to watch in the old days, and watch the new T, the, two, the 2K series before it turned into The Matrix or whatever the hell they were trying to do with it, and Tron or whatever the hell. And you're good, you know. I'm actually thinking I'm a, I'm gonna jump on the. Oh yeah, yeah, you got interrupted. So I'm gonna have to do an edit in and in Vegas, and uh, put these two videos together so they're not disjointed. Um, yep. Not gonna watch the Ninja Turtles. Not interested. I just watched the, uh, not long ago, I just watched the Uncharted fan film that was that Nathan Drake, uh, Nathan Fillion, and Stephen Lang, and uh, Ernie Reyes Jr., and, and uh, really good, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'd watch a show of that, you know what I mean? I don't know about a movie. How about, what do I think of Uncharted? Mm, it's definitely... Definitely, it's uncharted. I don't know, man. I don't really have any serious, complicated thoughts on that game. Uh, it's, it's a lot like, uh, I guess, I can't remember the name of the old games I used to play in, in a similar style of that. But obviously, it's a Tomb Raider-ish uh, adventure across the globe kind of game. But the thing about it is that you know I've played so many similar games in my day. I don't really think it's anything particularly special, except for its emphasis on extremely great graphics and pushing the system to its peak and with the graphic power. Uh, other than that, it's as average as it gets. It's not that. You know, the complex of gameplay, it's not innovative enough, it's not different than any other kind of game of that kind. And you can indeed go out and get a different, uh, much more in-depth game somewhere. Uh, Monster Hunter, Skyrim. Uh, I understand that Assassin's Creed got a film, even though I particularly don't care for that game. Prince of Persia got a film. The thing about Prince of Persia is that it's not even like, and to me, it's not deserving of a film at all, but they made a movie based on Prince of Persia because it was somewhat popular on it or something. They definitely made Hitman movies. They made two Hitman movies, even though Hitman kind of is like a game that, it's a Metal Gear Solid-ish game, and yet we have no Metal Gear. But we have two freaking Hitman movies. Hollywood is insane. Um, so, they are working on a Metal Gear movie, and they're going to probably mess it up. Um, I'm not hopeful for that in the least. They took Ghost in the Shell, which has been around for decades, and has been done in many vari various kind of ways, and done very well, and, and, and is one of the most respected anime ever and already has a great anime adaptation of the original source material. They took the movie and they just kind of Hollywooded it up and 
screwed it up and made it just uh, an average crappy thing. And too many cooks in the kitchen and it came out what it is. And I don't have anything against Scarlett Johansson. I think she was actually trying to capture Major as well as possible. And yeah, it's just surrounded by very weird decisions in the writing department and filmmaking department. And the guy that casts as Batalo does not fit that role at all. And little things like that just kind of turned me off the movie. And it just it felt so fake in Hollywood. The beauty of the anime is that one of the best things about it is its, its emphasis on immersion. You are so immersed in that world and you feel like you're in a really gritty, realistic, futuristic uh, society. So much effort was put into that and now all of it gone in the, in the Hollywoodized crap movie they decided to make. Um, I can't lost my train of thought, really. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna just uh, uh, what the hell was I thinking? I gotta I gotta work on where I'm going next, what I'm gonna do. And I just I just wanted to kind of put my opinion down on Uncharted and things like that. I watched the movie. Okay, now I'm back where I was. The uh, is Uncharted great or anything like that? Is Prince of Persia great? They're like the same thing to me. Prince of Persia is a riff on like if they were to make the Aladdin game into a more complicated game or. Magic Carpet game from the Windows game. A lot of games that, that take are like the Mummy or something like that. It, it, it's not particularly special. It's a bullet time kind of Spider-Man-ish kind of game. I'd like to see a God of War movie. And I, I played that and I thought that was quite fun and interesting. So there's a lot of things that they yet to make they're trying to get a monopoly kind of movie off the ground but it's not going to be directly about monopoly it's going to be about mcdonald's monopoly they're, they're making a movie in that regard but we, we we all have monopoly in our house somewhere we probably should make a movie based on one of the most popular board games ever probably do very well um i don't know if the time has passed for that I recently watched the Simpsons episode, and uh, that was educational. It was like I was laughing, I was enjoying it, and I was like, "How is this? How is this happening?" Uh, and of course, it, it it makes you feel like, "Wow, how the mighty have fallen!" This was what the Simpsons was. This was this is what the you know, the quality of the humor and the writing was at some point. It was actually quite intelligent. It was funny. It was just a good joke. It was just a clever, smart, really well-written little joke. And the humor was not forced. It was natural. Everything made sense. Everything flowed. And if they could get away with a quick joke, they would, but it would never be one that wasn't built on on over over the episode you know what i mean like today's simpsons just has a random gag or a sight gag the jokes in the old simpsons were actually built from the episode and then they throw in a quick joke gag at the end that came about because of the other bits in the, in the entire episode uh, that's it it was all about keeping things within a smaller, more simpler story. They weren't trying to add a bunch of uh, referential humor that be forgotten in five years or something. And that's exactly what... But does, does anyone working on The Simpsons care anymore? I think, sadly, no. They, they've retired. The cast is retired, but the check is still good. So they show up and do the readings. So... It's kind of like watching, uh, just just watching someone decline and fall and fail. 
not fun to watch. Not fun to watch The Simpsons fail and suck. What they should have done was what the Rugrats did. And, you know, some would say it wasn't a success. I don't know how long it lasted, and I didn't, never got into it. But all grown up, Rugrats was uh, the inevitable next step for that show. It was like, well, you could either keep them as babies, and they're just going to make the same exact kind of adventure show all over again season after season or you're going to try to evolve the characters to move on the Simpsons has not evolved it's a 90's show masquerading as a show made in the year 2018 it just does not work at least with Futurama and I didn't even like Futurama that much it was kind of a lame show not that interesting but at least it tried to do something new at least I tried to branch out and I really enjoyed watching Simpsons without it being The Simpsons. That's what I liked about Futurama. Um, you know, I'm not all about that show. I, I don't need it crazily, but it is so much more interesting to do comedy about the uh, next step of humanity and space and all of that than to see a show about the nuclear family and all that you know I don't even think the Simpsons have a have a changed their house from the 90s so it looks like a house in the 90s the way that it's still drawn you know that would not fly today we have flat screen TVs we have you know everybody has a smartphone and the fact that the peak characters don't age is very you know it is what it is it's not like you're not watching a cartoon. That's a cartoon. A character's own age, but it's just obvious that you can't watch The Simpsons from the '90s and then just side by side watch The Simpsons from today with all the, the uh, electric cars and Teslas and advancements in technology and internet speed. Back then, their entire episodes were like Seinfeld that were about. Uh, not being able to get to a payphone in time. There, you know, that would never work today. You know, in fact, I don't even watch Seinfeld much anymore. You know, it is like the question I have is, what would Seinfeld do, comedy-wise, in a world where we don't have uh, this complete inconvenience of, of having these payphones and beepers and and you could probably order it from eBay if you couldn't get it um, from the store or the shop or and you know the YouTube era that we're in and like things like the soup Nazi that stuff is stuff that would be on Twitter the next day and everybody would lose their crap over and cry like a baby back then a, a, a chef at a restaurant could be like that and it would be not on the news the next day which is the internet. The internet is functioning as a mini news network. Anytime anybody's mean to me, you take out your phone, you capture five minutes of it, and suddenly that person's address and phone number and everything and is on the internet, and you got a whole bunch of people running them down. So when you think about it, a lot of Seinfeld episodes would never happen today. So I don't know what the, the, the true. Uh, next step for Seinfeld's character would have been if he were to end up in today's world and dealing with today's uh, crazy people in today's crazy world you know uh, it's just yeah. cyber lynching is a thing and it's never would have happened in the old days because you know you'd have to actually sit there and patiently boot up your computer and go to your favorite news site and read the story you wouldn't have instantaneous comments, instantaneous nothing. We have instantaneous live video feeds of everything going on in everybody's life today and it's boring and I don't really want to see what you're doing today. I'm finding myself saying, no, I don't care. I don't really care about your little your little day that you're having today. You can just, I don't care. So, you know, that's what I'm thinking more now. And I'm, I've divorced myself from the internet tremendously and from having a month of not using a computer I just I don't even want to first of all I gotta repair my computer to get rid of old thermal paste put new one on do a lot of things 
so it's not ready yet for any kind of actual use serious serious gaming or anything like that and ultimately I don't want to become addicted to it I don't want to be all like constantly going on to check my email and Twitter and Facebook I like not being addicted to the internet I like it I like having to do something else for for my with my time although yeah you know I'm not I, I, you know having big wonderful boobies in your face practically 24 7 isn't something I'm against either um, so what I really wanted to get through with this video even though I went on a massive tangent I really want to talk about the return of Star Trek and what that means and I really like Star Trek a lot and I think that it's been a disservice uh, I read recently kind of glanced a video on YouTube about do we need this do we need Captain Picard to come back is this needed um, and I'm thinking to myself they did a lot with Picard, you know, back in the, in the day. In the day, I was just kind of casually, passively seeing it happen. My thing was X Men. I was all about uh, watching Patrick Stewart play Professor X for years and years. I knew he was Picard. I knew he did a lot of roles and a lot of movies and things. But I think his role he was really born for, without a doubt, was Professor X. Um, and he's pretty much retired from Professor X considering what Logan uh, was all about but when I when I, I decided to say okay I'll watch TNG you know recently and he is absolutely brilliant as Captain Picard and he plays him a hundred degrees 80 degrees differently than he would play Professor X they are nowhere the same character and yeah I can see him wanting to bring back Picard and is this needed? I think so. Because if we got something that had to do with TNG in recent years, it would make, okay, you know, this wouldn't be needed. We have, we have the, the Wesley show. We have the continuing adventures of Geordi. We have something regarding Data's character somewhere. You know? Even in the movies, if they made a reference to Noonie and Singh and... Not Noonie and Singh, but, you know, the guy who created Data and all that stuff. If they made references, I'd say, no, we have references and little things about TNG going on in the new Star Trek stuff. But no, the thing about the new Star Trek after TNG ended and all that stuff was put to bed... Only thing is Enterprise. Enterprise brought back... Uh, Troy and Riker for the end of the series but after that Star Trek uh, 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 shifted gears we went to JJ's movies and we, we, we they, they they just brushed off TNG so we're done with it we're not gonna do TNG stuff ever and everything Star Trek has been about going back to the TOS version so it is it's been kind of disrespectful in my opinion I think TNG is Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek just as much as TOS is Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek this is not a fan Star Trek creation like you know Deep Space Nine and you know all the stuff that came after Gene Roddenberry's passing pretty much is fan fiction whether it's good or not debatable all that stuff but it's not Gene's vision and TNG was Gene's vision and I have no idea what the ending was for Picard I haven't really watched the ending of TNG yet I don't know where his story actually ended or what the hell but considering the complete ignor you know LeVar Burton has talked about it he showed his dissatisfaction with how they're they're kind of ignoring TNG with the new Star Trek stuff and kind of putting all the effort that they put into that shows to the side and say none of that stuff matters. You know, it's not like TNG is, is not touched by Gene Roddenberry. That's the thing that kind of blows me away. This was Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek that he wanted it to be. 
and to ignore that to not respect that is kind of saying you don't care about what Gene Roddenberry and obviously J.J. Abrams doesn't care about what Gene Roddenberry wanted Star Trek to be we all know that um, so yeah it's kind of a compromised situation you want to see Gene Roddenberry Star Trek make a comeback and see his ideas and his interests in what he wanted to accomplish make a comeback um i do like star trek discovery i think it's a wonderful uh you know deviation it's a nice little divergence from the norm of star trek it's well written it has potential to be even better i do i do think that what they're doing with it is interesting and i, I want to continue seeing that but I think that what they did with TNG was great too. I think that uh, if we can bring Michael Dorn back and continue the Worf storyline, if, if, if stuff like that, we can we can keep that going because I, I think that stuff has some merit to it still. As much as the Star Trek Discovery show is about war and politics, uh, I like that TNG was about Star Trekking, which is the name of the show, Adventuring in Space. So, I don't know what the future is going to hold, and I'm curious, but I'm excited to see Picard return. I think his character did not really get its conclusion he deserved. A lot of characters have been kind of ignored. I, you know, Giordi never really finished his arc or whatever character was going on there so this could mean LeVar is gonna come back to play Giordi one last time and he's he's I've read interviews on what he thought he missed out on with Giordi and love interest family kids things like that so we, we, we could this could open a whole new world of Giordi stuff and I think lavar has got the time on his hands to get some stuff going with Giordi and if you actually watch and care about Giordi's character and you know LeVar put a lot of effort into him there's a lot of good Giordi material so of course everybody's going to be like oh you know we got to see where Data ended up and this could mean we get their final redemption of the Data character and we don't have this limbo of what happened to him after Nemesis so this could really you know end lore a lot of a lot of people say Lore should have been the uh, main uh, adversary for Data in um, Nemesis or something like that. I can't remember, but uh, Lore's conclusion was anticlimactic in a lot of ways. And it's up to Brent Spiner, I think, with CGI and prosthetics and all that stuff that we got these days, bringing Data back and making him look real good and normal would be very interesting then lore and I think why not you know it can't be any worse than Discovery Discovery is a hit or miss kind of show really I really enjoyed some episodes but you know the whole Mirrorverse uh, captain being a Mirrorverse character and faking that he's regular person it's such a convoluted mess and, and the drama of you know, Michael Burnham having to, you know, get along with the mirror-versed version of the captain that died and her going to jail. It's so convoluted and ridiculous. It's hard to swallow, but the show is Star Trek, which means that as wacky and weird as the stories are, the characters are what make you want to watch it. And the characters on Star Trek Discovery... I like them. I really want to see where they're going to go. Um, that's it. This video is so done. But I'm all for it. Bring back anything TNG. I don't think it ended yet or satisfactorily enough. And I think it deserves this because we've got too much Star Trek TOS referential shows and movies now. And TNG gets nothing. It Come on, you know. 
in time people will look back and re really respect TNG uh, a lot more because it is a show that is of its time it's so freaking 90s and it's so good it's so better than anything coming on today except for one episode I don't know. but you know okay I'm gonna finish it up here and that's my thoughts on that